Hello, favorite people. How are you all doing? I trust you people are doing fine today. Well, if this is your first time of stopping by at my channel, you're very, very welcome. Kindly like, subscribe, share, comment, right? And then click on the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draft a pencil skirt for a plus size person. Interesting, right? And these are the following tools needed for our drafting process. We need our scissors, we need our rulers, our tape, we need the measurement of the client, we need a pencil, an eraser, and a seal tip, right? So let's get right into it. So these are the measurements that we'll be needing. We need the person's waist measurement, which is 40, hip 48, skirt length 28, waist to hip measurement is 10, and our nipple to nipple measurement, which is seven. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be dividing the largest circumference on the, of the person's body. In this case, which is her hip, her hip is 48. So I am dividing that measurement into two. And I'm going to roll that out into a straight line. So we have about 48 inches, right? But I am doing 50 instead of 48. This is so I will have enough um, paper to work with. As a rule of thumb, it is better for you to have an excess than for you to have a shortage, right? So that was what I went ahead to do. So I just divided 50 into 2 and that gave me 25 inches. So I measured it from the edge of the pattern paper and rolled that into a straight line. After which I had to cut that out to allow you see the area I was working with. I also want you to note that when it comes to this largest um, body circumference between your waist and your um, hip whichever that is the bigger measurement that is what you're going to use if the person's uh, waist is bigger than the hip please you're going to be using that measurement to create the block all right all right so what i went further to do was to further divide this block which is um 25 inches into two equal halves so making me to have 12.5 inches and after i was done marking them i ruled them into a straight line i connected the points together and ruled them into a straight line now these halves will represent the front block and the back block so the front block and the back block on half scale which means for this front, I'm going to um, cut it on fold. When I eventually finish my drafting, it has to be on fold, right? So that was what I just finished doing. And then we go to the next thing. So I went ahead to label my patterns. Oh, very, very important. You want to know which is represent what part. So this place I'm writing on now, it's my center front. And then the other opposite side of it is my center back. I hope you understand that. So labeling your patterns is of a high importance because it will help you to identify things that need to be done per time, right? So let's get right into the drafting process proper. Who's coming with me? All right. The first thing I want to do is um, measure my waist to my hip measurement. This waist to hip measurement can be gotten by dividing your hip by four and ac or actually sitting on a flat surface and measuring from your waist up to the flat surface. Whatever it gives you, that is your waist to your hip measurement. So I just... Um, ruled that I marked those points together and ruled them into a straight line connecting both the back and the front the front and the back blocks. So when you're drawing this line you want to ensure you add some kind of pressure to the pen so that you the things you're sketching will be properly seen. 
So the next thing I did was to take my bust span, also known as our nipple to nipple measurement. And for this, our clients, our nipple to nipple measurement is seven inches. So I, me I divided that into two and connected them from top to bottom, right? <laughs> I connected it from top to bottom and rolled it into a straight line. And then I went up from the hip line by two inches. This is actually where my dart is going to stop, like it's going to st stop at. And then I opened up my dart by 0 0.75 to the left and to the right, right? So that ranges from one inch to as much as two inches, depending on what works for you. But in this video, I am using 1.5, which I divided into two and I shared them on both the left and the right sides of the dart leg. And then I connected them to get a, a wedge like, like something like a triangle shape. All right. Now, after which I was done, I went ahead to take my waist measurement my waist measurement divided by four. So my waist divided by four is 40 divided by four, which gives me 10. And then I added back my 1.5 inches. So I wanted to connect it to the hip. Well, I remember that I did not use the, my client's exact hip measurement to create the block, right? So I had to erase that and do the right thing. So anytime you, you use a bigger measurement to create your block please ensure that you retake your measurements go cool? so that you don't have any issues all right so i did that and it turned out to be 12 inches i marked that and then connected it all the way to the waist area so after i was done i now went to the hem of the skirt and um, i went in by like two inches Yes, I wanted the skirt to be fitted, like I wanted it to be fitted and, you know, have some kind of shapey look. So I went in by um, two inches from the hem and then went ahead to connect that into a straight line all the way to the hip, from the hem to the hip. So you got that pencil kind of shape, right? Now, I also want you to note that the amount of shapiness you require is solely dependent on you, what you want and what works for you, right? So, after which I now went to my back to do the same thing, to take my dad's for my back. But before I did that, I had to factor in the back tightening. So, this back tightening takes care of any bulge because your back is not straight. Like your center back is not straight. It is, you know, this tightening actually takes care of that um, excesses so that your zipper lays flat and sits well at the back. And then from after marking out my 0 0.75 for my back tightening, from the new center back line, I now measured my nipple to nipple measurement. But because I... I, after I had taken the 0 0.75, my that was going to look slanted. So what I did was I just added the 0 0.75 to my 3.5, and that gave me 4.25. So I took 4.25 from the waist area down to the hip and marked it into a straight line. After which I came up from the from the hip line by one inch, right. That's where my dart was going to stop and then opened it up by 0 0.75 to the left and to the right side. Easy peasy, right? Now, after I was done and I took my waist measurement, just like the way I did for the front, my waist was 40 divided by 4 was 10, which was what I marked. And then added back. You always want to add back if you're taking any darts, you want to add back your that intake right and then mark that and then on the hip i did my the same thing i did for the front divided by four that was 12 inches and then i had these points and then used my ruler to reconnect them into a straight line i want you to also note that when you're drafting your back patterns your shape can look funny in fact your waist can be even looking 
more it can be wider and then get smaller when it comes to the hip you do not have any reason to worry at all everything is right right by the time you take your that everything will balance out so that should not don't make you fret so now because i used um two inches to shape the hem of my front part i had to divide that into two to distribute them to the center back and the side back if you're doing zero point if you're doing 1.5 you 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 can actually share them equally or unequally what i mean you can choose to say to you want this um, center back line to have maybe one inch and the side back one inch or you might decide to say that you want it to be unevenly distributed but at the end of it you should have a total sum of two inches you can see this side back will have 1.2 and the center back will have 0 0.5 so regardless of whichever method you want to use ensure that both are evenly you have two inches distributed the exact number that you use to shape the front evenly or unevenly distributed at the back side i hope we understand so that was it i just went ahead to cut out my pattern you have to do that gently and at least i forget i didn't want to use marker because i know that so many of us want to try this out and then using of marker will kind of add to the measurement and you know precision and accuracy is really key so after cutting this out i went i discovered that the seal tape i used for the hem was popping out so i just needed to keep that like fold it properly and let it come alongside the paper and then after i had even just arranged that and now went ahead to close my darts i went ahead to close my darts so i i folded from one dart leg to the other i folded and made a crease line and then allowed it to rest on the other um that leg and then i used my seal tape to secure that in place and i cut that out after i was done um closing my dart and i went down from the waist from the center front part i went down by one inch now this is important because your waist is not straight your waist is more like a curve so by coming down by one inch you want to factor in that to allow the this tummy area you know and the body to relax and the skirt to relax properly properly around that side so i now connected it back to my side front and then it is not too curvy it is not too straight it is just a just minimal curve i went ahead and cut that out as easy as abc and voila our front pattern for our skirt was ready right so the next thing i went to do i just moved to the back pattern to do justice to it so i went ahead to cut out the back pattern and i did that as quickly as possible after which i now closed the dots just like i did for the front pattern I closed it and used a seal tape to secure it in place. So after securing it in place, this was what my pattern looked like. My back pattern looked like this. And then I discovered that my center back was tilting upwards, which is not ideal. So you want to um, check to see that everything you're working on is going to come out as expected. That's one of the beauties of pattern drafting. You know, you get to see what your outcome is going to look like. So as I saw that it was tilting up from the center back line, it came down by uh, by 0 0.35. You can do 0 0.25. And then I connected it into a straight line. You can see from the video, this part I'm cutting out. It was tilting up. So just use my straight ruler to reconnect it and cut it out. And I cut out the seal tape that was coming up. I just cut that out and guys that is it too about our pattern drafting i hope you found this video really helpful oh lest i forget because i told you guys it's a half skill 
you want to indicate in the center front that this is going to be unfold thank you so very much for watching guys i'm super excited to do this see you in my next video